Hey everybody, this is Matt Reisinger with Reisinger Homes. Welcome to my video blog on green building and building science. I'm here at a Barley and Pfeiffer Architects job. Uh, we're in new construction here in Westlake, which is a suburb of Austin, Texas. And I wanted to talk to you today about using a radiant barrier on your exterior of your house. This is a pretty interesting practice uh, that we're doing on this house. We're, we're wrapping the house uh, with our weatherproofing. This is a DuPont uh, Tyvek commercial wrap. And this is their commercial D product, which, ha which has a, I don't know if you can tell in the video, but it has kind of a crinkle plane. And then we're putting an exterior rigid foam on the outside of the house. If you scroll up, you can see we've added the foam up on this section already. And so we've got three quarters of an inch of rigid foam on the outside of the house. And then in areas where we've got an air gap, in fact, we've got a brick ledge, uh, pardon me, a stone ledge in the front of this house here. A little tough to see in the video, we're covered with some lumber here, but this is our stone ledge on the front. And then we're going to be putting a stone veneer in part of the house. In the areas where we're facing south and west, where we've got the stone veneer, there's going to be an airspace between uh, the stone and the front of the sheathing. And so you can see this is our Tyvek drain wrap right here. This is our three-quarter rigid foam. And then outside of that, they're doing something a little unique here. We're using a radiant barrier. Um, if you can scroll back here and look at the whole wall, this is basically a, a sheet um, metalized type product that we've placed on top of the rigid foam. And then we'll have approximately a, a one inch airspace between that and the backside of our rock. And of course we know that heat transfers three ways, conduction, convection, and radiation. The rigid foam is addressing the conduction and the convection and this radiant barrier is addressing that radiant heat that's uh, the sun's rays are coming and I can tell you the uh, the subcontractors that have worked in this house everybody's quit for the day so it's quiet but as people have been walking through this space you can really feel the heat off this radiant barrier I think this really is a best practice for your house so if you've got a house that has an airspace I think this is a great system on the other hand if we were going to be putting siding right on top of this and flush to this product, you would not get that radiant barrier benefit. So I would not recommend doing that. You really just want to do it on a, a masonry type veneer, or you could do a rain screen type system as well, where you were going to set your siding up uh, on lath, so you'd have a three quarter airspace behind your siding. But really, this is this is a phenomenal practice, especially here in Texas, where we're dealing with hot, uh, humid. Uh, climate and really we're a very cooling dominated climate so thanks for joining me and if you're building a, a house in this heat please think about a, uh, a best practice method like this have a good day everybody we'll see you next time